and welcome to Leadership Table Talk, a show designed to help you develop and improve your leadership skills and talents. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Gillum. In case this is your first time watching this show, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I am a retired Air Force Colonel and former member of the Senior Executive Service Corps with the Department of Defense at the Pentagon. I'm also a number one Amazon bestselling author. I've written 12 books to include three leadership books, and I'm the owner of M2G Dynamic Leadership Solutions, LLC. Today, I want to focus on the topic, executive leadership, taking your business to the next level. To discuss this topic with me, I have invited two wonderful ladies that I actually met through a professional business networking association, and they are Ms. Herberta Jones, who is the owner of the Herberta J. Jones Insurance Agency. And I also have with me Ms. Jenny Dufran, owner of the Dufran Solutions Group, LLC. Ladies, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's great to be here. It is great to be here. Great. Thank Fantastic. You. I'm so glad you could make it. And uh, let me just ask you to just share with our audience a little bit about your backgrounds. Herberta? Um, <clears throat> well, my background, I've been in insurance for over 25 years, uh, a business owner for the last 10. I just celebrated my 10th year. Congratulations. Yes, being an independent uh, uh, insurance agent. Yes. Uh, I am also a nationwide insurance agent, yes. uh, but I am allowed to broker in that relationship. I am married uh, for the last past 42 years. Congratulations again. <laughs> <laughs> to my high school sweetheart Wonderful. and uh, have two children, two adult children and uh, going on four uh, grandchildren. Congratulations. Uh, so, yeah, doing Loving life. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Jenny, could you share yeah, with so us? Yeah, so I'm uh, really excited to be here. Um, I would say that my venture into leadership began with my 10 years of service as a United States Marine. Um, <laughs> yes, which is an exciting adventure to say the least. Yes. Um, and so I so ten years in the Marine Corps, and then I transitioned into the federal government for for a bit of time, mm -hmm. and then into the nonprofit sector. So I was in the national nonprofit sector sector for a number of years. Um, along the way, I ended up uh, transitioning into the education field and became a teacher. Wow, taught man. for a few years, and then mm -hmm. uh, that adventure led me to found the first and only all boys public charter school in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. So I ran that, that led that for eight wonderful. years, um, mm -hmm. had that tremendous leadership experience for eight years, um, and have transitioned on to my new adventure, which is running the Defrain Solutions uh, Group, which is a training and leadership development company, headquartered mm -hmm. in Washington D.C. So I'm very excited to to have these, you know, just different types of experiences. Um, that have that have led me to this to this place. That's wonderful, ladies. I have definitely invited the li right ladies <laughs> on the show today. Okay, so let me ask uh, also, as entrepreneurs, what inspired or motivated you to start your uh, specific businesses? Well, um, the adage, um, through adversity comes opportunity. I would uh, best say is. Uh, responsible or was my catalyst. Um, my husband, as I spoke of before, uh, had 25 years with Bethlehem Steel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And out the door walked over $100,000 of income oh, wow. every year. Wow. And that was in 2003. And by 2005, <laughs> I said, I guess it's time. I had talked mm -hmm. for years mm -hmm. about opening an agency, how was my vision, I had it all laid out, I, I pictured everybody, I could see everything, how it was going to be, and in 2005, actually it started in 2004, I got a phone call. I got a phone call and, and I was asked if I would be interested in doing it, and I said, wow. why not? I had been training for it, I had filled various leadership positions with uh, large insurance companies. Yes. I had made profits for them. I said, why not? So I did. And, um, and, and this is the key part in that I asked my husband just to come and help me out. 
I said, if you'll just come and it's my first time owning my own business, if you'll just come answer the phones or hang out with me. And, and he said, okay, that was 10 years ago and he's still there. <laughs> so I talked him into becoming an agent uh -huh. and uh, we've been running the agency actually together for the last past 10 years. But that was my catalyst that I needed to do something that would uh, get that income back. Yes. And um, allow me, you know, to be me. And that was it. It was sent straight from heaven, I feel. Oh man, that is wonderful, yeah. Roberta. Uh, Jenny, would you like to share? Sure. Mm -hmm. The I would say that my journey around leadership, as I spoke earlier, began when I was in the Marine Corps. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been passionate about leadership. Um, the particularly learning and understanding um, my own personal leadership first. And so as I've as I've grown professionally, grown in my leadership, grown, just matured professionally, I've continued to always observe leaders, talk to leaders, mm -hmm. um, think about the kinds of things that are great in leaders, leaders and also mm -hmm. some of the things that people struggle with a lot. Yes. And that really yes. brought me to a place in my, in my venture with my company. Um, I, I, I just, I feel like there's a lot of discussion around leadership, there's a lot to read around leadership, but I think leaders often need people who can come alongside them and really help coach, mentor, mm -hmm. and help them break through those areas where there, there's a lot of challenge. And so I would say that I bring the, sort of what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about seeing leaders really elevate mm -hmm. to become their very best selves in leadership. And so that's, the, that's, what, that's what's passionate to me. That's, wow. that's sort of the passion driver of, of the company and the work that we do um, with, with leaders. That is fantastic. Ladies, I am just so amazed at your backgrounds and what you're doing in that particular space of uh, your individual businesses and so forth. So since this show focuses on executive leadership, taking your business to the next level, mm -hmm. what enabled you to take your dream and make it a reality? Mm -hmm. Just talk a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, very, 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 um uh, good question. Uh, and again, as you are in your business and working on your business, yes, um, you have to take into account everything that's going on around you, the trends, um, buying habits, uh, the needs, uh, people's needs. And I think part of it for me was the change. I, I remember when the housing market began to crash mm -hmm. 2008 and I started seeing people doing things different and changing different mm -hmm. so it allowed me <clears throat> to take a step back observe and then elevate and realize I had to do something different I had to work my business on a different level I had to uh, and again to be able to realize my vision um, I had to be in a position where I am helping somebody else yes. get where they yes. needed to go. It wasn't really all about me anymore. Mm -hmm. It was, in my vision, it was about me helping someone else, creating opportunities for people that didn't even uh, know that they could have opportunities in the insurance business or within their circumstances, mm -hmm. you yes. know, within the circumstances that mm -hmm. they were confronted with. And, um, and again, through that, um, adversity came opportunity and we were prepared for it um, uh, so much information mm -hmm. information was coming faster mm -hmm. due to uh, internet and technology so uh, and I was able to reach beyond just my geographic boundaries yes, because as the internet grew I'm available anywhere, and right. I found myself getting opportunities. Uh, opportunities were coming to me to sell insurance in various states. Well, it's nothing stopping me from selling insurance <laughs> in another state. Yes. All I need to do is get another license, mm -hmm. you know, to, just to get that license. And then I found people in those other states that wanted to buy. I mean, to wanted that wanted to sell insurance under my agency, yes. mm -hmm. and it just. I'm going to say it was the times and being able to recognize, again, helping someone else. Right. Being able to help someone else get where they needed to be, help me elevate 
to where I need it, where I would like to be. Oh, Roberta, that was yeah. so eloquently said. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's really, really good. Jenny, could you add to that? So uh, taking the dream your... from a dream mm -hmm. into an actual thriving business. Yes. What were the levers or what were the things that, that drove me to do that? So I would say, again, the passion. But, but I think what often happens with entrepreneurs is that we're very passionate, mm -hmm. but we're not really clear. And so Absolutely. taking the dream to reality for me was to clarify. And it, it took a little while, and I would say it's probably still, as I'm still learning, um, as I'm still having experiences, as the business is still having experiences, it's, it's, it's always refining and focusing and clarifying mm -hmm. and making sure, do I clearly know who my ideal client is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I clearly know um, what, the, what, the, what the market will bear in terms of the kind mm -hmm. of work? leadership training and development, as you probably well know, is there's a lot of people in this space. Yes, absolutely. And so what are the unique characteristics that I personally bring to the table as the CEO of my company? Mm -hmm. And then how does that match up with what I see our needs or what, what needs exist, particularly in the 21st century workplace? And so mm -hmm. I would say th probably three things. One, getting really clearly focused. Mm -hmm. um, the dream has to have tangible, concrete goals and, and outcomes. The other is creating the systems to make it happen. And the other is having a plan. You have to have a plan um, in order to mm -hmm. make it happen. So I would say that, that for me, is, it's a little bit more technical, but that's the taking that dream and really building the business. I had already built a business from $400,000 to $5 million, uh -huh. and so I understood mm -hmm. some of those components that needed to happen in order for this new dream to manifest and touch people's lives. Oh, yeah. Jane, I, I think you need to go on Shark Tank yeah. and actually yeah. have it sitting behind the desk. But I second, Ladies. I second because uh, I jumped in it just wanting, uh, because of my passion mm -hmm. for insurance and people mm -hmm. and wanting my own. And before I knew it, I realized, wow, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get someplace. And it's just like coming here without that GPS system. And then, and then I had MapQuest <laughs> printed out behind that. You know, you have to have your plan. Exactly. You, have you, to you, have gotta, plan. you have to have a plan. And that plan is constantly changing Absolutely. and moving. And your focus, if you don't focus on it mm -hmm. and, and really dive in and say, wait a minute, this is, these are the factors, like I said, the 20th century, how we do business, the technology, the needs and the wants of people. If you don't focus on all of that, guess what? It, then you'll end up nowhere. You'll end up in the middle of 495. <laughs> right. You'll end up with another job. Yeah. You'll end up business. with another job in your business. Than a business right? exactly. exactly. So well, we didn't want that. So it's like, focus, focus, focus. You know, you've got to get this done. Well, ladies, it looks like we've come to a, a breaking point here. So we will continue this. Uh, enlightening conversation yeah. after the break. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. To order a DVD or VHS copy of this program or any program seen on Channel 10, call 571-749-1101. Welcome back to Leadership Table Talk. Our guests today are just outstanding business, business owners themselves. And before the break, we were talking a lot about what it takes to take your business to the next level. So what we're going to uh, pick up on is, ladies, what does it take to continue to move your business forward? Can't emphasize focus and a plan uh, and embracing change. Hmm. Uh, that's it for me. Diligence, focus, plan, moving forward. Jenny? So I absolutely yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. um, I think in addition to, to those elements, I, I think I'm going to pick, pick up on change. Mm -hmm. As a business owner, you really have to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening mm -hmm. and to frankly, don't not to be too proud to make the shift and make the change. Mm -hmm. And it may be very dramatic, but I think that's one of the great things about being an entrepreneur and a small business owner is that if I see that we need to make a radical shift to meet the needs of the marketplace, then that's exactly what we have to mm -hmm. do. So I would say being willing to change, um, being willing to continue to educate yourself. I think that's another yes, thing that leaders often absolutely. do do not do enough of or just don't do it at all because we're so busy. 
Excuse but I would me. say that um, continuing to go to go to conferences, mm -hmm. um, have mastermind groups, whatever the thing yes, is that you need, absolutely. but continue to do that because you learn a lot of really great things. Um, I was recently in a conversation, and a gentleman was talking about two billionaires that he had the opportunity to work with, and he said that what was fascinating to him about both of them is that they both continue to learn the kinds of things that we would have thought they're not going to do that. Somebody else is doing it for them, like learning how to tweet on Twitter, mm -hmm. as an example. Mm -hmm. But he said that they were always thirsty and hungry for new knowledge. And I took that in, really, and made it a point in my business and in my personal leadership life to, to continue to educate myself all the time. Because you never know where your next really great idea is going to come from. You just don't. It could come from a conversation. It could come from attending a conference. It could come mm -hmm. from a, a magazine article. It could come from lots of different directions. So I would say change and continuous education, constantly <coughs> making sure that Excuse you're me. educating yourself is a huge piece for me. Oh, that is wonderful, wonderful advice for any uh, new business mm -hmm. owner, Absolutely. et cetera. Now, ladies, let me ask you, I've always asked a lot of my guests about the importance of having a business plan. Can you comment on that, the significance of that in your businesses? <laughs> um, I can't do without it. Uh, again, it's a living thing, yeah. uh, so you're constantly tweaking it, changing it, and don't be afraid that you have to do that. Uh, that's the thing I found with a plan, a business plan. I thought when I started, oh, I do this business plan, and because this didn't work, or this changed, or this shifted, I felt like, oh my gosh, I failed, or, or something went wrong, yes. and what do I do now? No. Mm. Uh, and again, um, <clears throat> As Jenny said, as you go to conferences, as you meet with other leaders, if you realize what's going on in the business world or, or, or out in the marketplace, you realize you have to change. And if you're going to, ch if things around you are changing, then so must your plan. Yes. Because you didn't know a year ago when you developed that plan what was going to be happening today. And if, it, if the dynamic is different today, then you need to go back and revise your plan today. Great advice. Um, so it's, it's something advice. that you just cannot do without. Absolutely. So I echo, I'm just going to sound like an echo chamber <laughs> okay. here, but I absolutely echo what you said. Um, and I think the other part of that is sometimes you write your very best work mm -hmm. at whatever point you sit down to start to, 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 to write out your business plan. Mm -hmm. And then life happens. Mm -hmm. yes. And if you're not going back and revisiting that plan, you actually don't realize how what a genius you were to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So I, I give this as, as of my own personal example today. So I have written and I've worked it and reworked mm -hmm. it. And I had a brain dump a couple of weeks ago. And today I was doing something. Someone asked me a question. And I was like, oh, well, I'm just doing all of these things. <laughs> I literally opened my business plan and realized that I had already focused the work that we were doing. So I think the other important piece about the living and breathing document is yeah. sometimes you forget the genius that you had when you wrote it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you forget the passion pieces that you put in mm -hmm. that said, this is how I'm going to, this is, these are the values, for example, yes. that I want to have in my business. Mm -hmm. um, these are the ideal clients or client that mm -hmm. I want to focus on. These are the revenue goals that I have. Yes. And so, those are those become key uh, key I don't know maps to go to return to and say yes this is what I said I was going to do and they're good constant reminders so business plan I know it doesn't have to be a thousand pages nope. I think some of those are not helpful mine is about ten um, and it's very helpful and I definitely tweak it and update it and get new new ideas, fresh new insight, mm -hmm, update mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. and and it's great. So you have to have one, I think, as a business a business owner. I think the challenge comes in for for business leaders that feel that sort of this laborious checkbox. I have mm -hmm. to check this yes. off. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, mine is written for the CEO of the company. Uh -huh. Right. It's not written for another audience. Now, not everyone's in that position. Some need to write theirs for venture capitalists or whatever, but. In, right. in for most small business owners, you're writing it as your guide. It's you're writing guide. it as the guide for your C-suite. You're writing it for yes. the guide for your mm -hmm. staff. You're writing it so you can ma maintain consistency to your mission and vision. Mm -hmm. That is, and and uh, quite often, mm -hmm. especially when you are working in your business, mm -hmm. you find yourself getting caught up in the oh, in the uh, in the whirlwind. Uh -huh. 
I mean, it is, totally. it, it floods you someday in weeks and months sometimes will go by and you will forget. I, I love what you said about your passion. It reminds you, your business plan sort of reminds you, wait a minute, what did I do this for? <laughs> why, <laughs> right. why did I start why am I this? Doing this? Oh, that's right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that's right. You know, besides making money, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted yeah. to do, I wanted to get these things accomplished and some kind of way I, I sort of left that out because uh, and then to what your ideal client looks like. I, yes, I found absolutely. most, when I first wrote my plan, I knew to a T what my client needed to look like in order for me to achieve all the elements that was in my plan. And as you work every day in your business, you get caught up in the whirlwind and you start taking everybody. Well, I don't want to use that <laughs> word, but you, you start compromising. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and, and your product doesn't fit everybody. Yes. The uniqueness mm -hmm. of what we do, yes. each and every one of us, we really do have a defined market. You can't be all things to all people. Absolutely. So as you define who that client base is go going to be, and most of the time you will write that down in your business plan, mm -hmm. you better revisit it mm -hmm. because if you're going to publish your number and your, and your, your name, uh -huh. your business, mm -hmm you're going to get everybody and everybody doesn't fit that plan. Absolutely. Uh, so the business plan sort of helps you rezone, mm -hmm. re, right. redefine uh, who and what and why mm -hmm. you, you did this in the first place. Oh, mm -hmm. the, the advice, ladies, that you have given has mm -hmm. just been tremendous. So before we um, get out of here, I want to make sure I give you guys an opportunity to talk uh, specifically about your individual businesses. Is there other oh, things yes. that you would like to share with our audience about your particular businesses, mm -hmm. where they can find you, a little oh, bit more great. information great. about who you're targeting, your target market, all those kinds of things, Excellent. please. Great, well, thank you so much again for the opportunity. Um, I am Herberta J. Jones. My, uh, I found 10 years ago Herberta J. Jones Insurance and Financial Services, Inc. We are located at 4301 Silver Hill Road. We're just across from the Metro, adjacent to Suitland Parkway. Um, it's a little brick building uh, all by itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm tickled to death because 10 years ago we started the business and we just had uh, one little 500 square feet. I have since bought the building. Awesome. Uh, I've uh, expanded yes. another 1,000 square feet mm -hmm. just for business purposes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we specialize, now we service, we service the family, um, uh, the homeowner, the tenant, people who buy auto insurance, life insurance. My particular specialty is commercial uh, because I am a business owner and I understand how easy it is, how much money, how much time, how much energy, how many sacrifices you make to have that business, how much you put in that business, you can lose it in an instant if you do not have the proper coverages in place. So. Along with commercial policies, uh, that's my specialty, making sure you have, as a business owner, the right protection, and I call it, for your assets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I also, I started the business in life insurance, so that passion has never left me because my vision uh, it, it, it was to always make sure that each family understood how they could protect. You can't bring that loved one back, but you can protect what would be lost mm -hmm. if that loved one uh, un unforeseen, you know, yes, the unforeseen um, happened. Absolutely. Uh -huh. We're all going to die, yes. but if that time comes sooner than later, then please let me be the one bring the check. So yes. we're there to serve the uh, community. Um, we're looking for talent all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, my vision was always to mentor, so I'm always look. I'm, I'm looking for people to mentor, and um, give opportunity to. Thank so you. that's us. Thank you. Fantastic. So my name is Jenny Dufresne. I'm the CEO of the Dufresne Solutions Group LLC. We're a training, a leadership training and development company that is focused on results. So the results that we, um, that leaders and companies that work with us that they achieve, they have a growth in their revenue, um, they expand their impact, and they usually reduce their costs yes. as a result of that. 
So we work with directly with leaders, usually mid-level managers, primarily that, that group of folks who have the CEO, the C-suite mm -hmm. is, is giving directives, the staff is giving questions, and you have that, that group of folks in the middle that are really sort of squeezed and have to kind of navigate a, a, a number of different areas. But what we do is we train those folks to break down the barriers that are actually creating more stress in their lives as leaders. Yes. Leaders are always always have stress. That's a that's a given. Mm. But but I think that the that mid level mid level managers um, experience a lot more stress. So we break down help them break barriers, we help them spark innovation and we help them inspire happiness in the in their workplaces. And so that's what that's the work that we do that we're very excited to do and very passionate about doing. Well thank you ladies. I uh, it looks like we've just ran out of time here today, but I want to thank you both yeah, for coming so. to our show, and I thank hope you. that I can get you back again in awesome. the near future, and I want to thank all of you for tuning in today to Leadership Table Talk, and if you have questions about our program, please feel free to reach out to me at www.m2gleadershipbiz.com, and this is Dr. Mary Gellum, and I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.